Recently, over drinks, a friend of mine told me something amazing. I was just talking to this guy, she said. He thinks he's figured out the three best of everything. The next morning, I went to see him. And when I got to the top of a set of crooked stairs, he was waiting for me. Welcome, he said. Welcome to Holy Trinities. Guitar. These are my three favorite guitars, and I measure that by how much they want to make me pick up the guitar. It's not about a lead thing. You know, guitar is, I think of it as a tambourine with a ton of different pitches and a very strange looking tambourine, more or less. It's not a lead, it's not a lead thing. I've all, I, it took me a while to get there because all the guitar god thing, it's all lead players. I never connected with that. These are the rhythm players. Honorable mention, Prince and Al McKay, of course greatest rhythm players ever but these I had to I had to go with three number one David Williams David Williams evening David good evening how are you Ray Stratocaster Ibanez of some sort and boom fourth fourth position fourth position you're really playing a big, big wrist motion, but only hitting one string. Let's have a look at you doing something. Don't stop till you get enough. What David Williams did in his own words is take that rhythm style. I have a rhythm style. And make it the hook of the song. All those Michael Jackson songs. Rhythm solos. That was all just rhythm guitar till David Williams. Took it from the for, from the background to the front of being like the solo part of the record, you know. Huge. David Williams, thank you, David. Number two, Nile Rogers. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Nile Rogers. Currently designing his own beret. And uh, it's a lot of work, according to him. Nile Rogers is so funky. Nile Rogers is so funky. David, do you think I made this too funky? Nile, darling. Is there such a thing? <laughs> if we can ever reach that point of being too funky, we go to Nirvana. Aww. I bought this guitar because of Nile Rodgers. And we're going to go from fourth position into the neck position for Nile. Nine gauge strings, low action, very classical harmony, very classical harmony. Uh, I mean, I grew up on classical music. Very diatonic also, very diatonic. I want things to be harmonically interesting. A lot of ry rhythm funk guitar, it's all kind of centered around that James Brown harmony, not Nile Rodgers. He's, he's Mozart. I am not a three chord rock guy, I'm a two chord disco guy. You know, there is one thing that Nile Rodgers and David Williams have in common, and it's that 11 chord. Once you get that in your fingers, you can't stop Thanks playing it. Thank you. Thank you, Nile. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Number three, David T. Walker. <laughs> Wah Wah Watson said it, any recording from the 70s if it's funky it's Wah Wah if it's pretty it's David T 
my personal favorite, Never Can Say Goodbye. Never can say goodbye. There's a strip mix on Spotify where you can really hear David T. That's the thing about David T is you don't even, he's not very loud in those original mixes, but he's kind of making the track. David T, of course, the Gibson Birdland. This is some weird 2013 Kalamazoo Midtown thing or whatever, but my oh my, do I get so much joy from this instrument. I liken it to the day I got my Jamerson P bass and put the labellas on it and played Jamerson lines. You know, it's very much about the instrument. It's very rare in history to find those mini moments where someone altered the course of it. Like when Marley Marl sampled uh, drums or when Ke Kevin Systrom uh, did the double tap like on Instagram. One of those moments was David T. Walker's Pinky. One of my favorite sounds is the harp. Now a staple of our, uh, any soul. That was David T. Can you imagine doing something like that? I can't. <laughs> See, these, a guitar like this, you gotta get out of the house. You gotta get out of your comfort zone. I went to a house show in LA. Very high pressure situation. Very high pressure, uh, you know, darty eyes and whatnot. And after the show, this band Ink was playing. Blew my mind. After the show, I said, it blew my mind. He says, I want to show you a guitar. And he showed me this Gibson. I went home and bought it because it's like a bird land and it's not $10,000. Moral of the story, get out of the house, go to that show. You never, you never know. Okay, you got to get out of the house. I'm talking to myself. 